said, are, do you have a problem with your 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 grandson being gay? No, I don't have a problem with my grandson being gay. Well, clearly you do because you did a limp <laughs> wrist and you said light in the loafers and you couldn't say the word gay, right? Yeah, and then that's he's right. Like, you can't use the word gay? What, what's the problem here? <laughs> then my dad didn't talk to me for about a good three months, but um, he had to calm down from – from, but the thing is, is that he was injured by the fact is, is that I kind of had him in it. And I could have been, yeah. but the thing is that I needed to pull it out of him because I needed, like, we need to normalize these words and stuff and whatever have you. And it, yeah. it, like, I'm not expecting everybody to understand it. I'm not ever expecting everybody uh, to, to like these things and these changes. These changes are uh, new for many people. But the thing is, is that if it's not harming anybody, then what business is it of yours? All right. Hi, and welcome to the Skeptical Leftist Podcast. Uh, today I'm joined by Nikki Eat KS. Thank you for joining me. Hi, Corey. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's going to be, I think, exciting. Um, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> oh, I'm, sure I'm, I'm, exci- I'm excited about this. Um, well, that's and, awesome. Uh, it, I, it's great that, you know, even though it's different time zones and different uh, schedules and stuff like that, you're able to fit people in. So that's fabulous. For sure. For sure. So I guess a good place to start is like, uh, who are you and what do you want to talk about? Okay. So... I'm Eat Nikki EKS. So Nikki's my first name. EKS is the acronym of my podcast, which has been on and off going since 2011. Um, EKS stands for Everything in the Kitchen Sink. It is a music podcast. I like to, when I started the podcast, it was originally a live show. Mm-hmm. And then I really struggled with the live show. I panicked. I got nervous. And um, the That's show fair. was based out of the UK. And it was something completely new for me. And I really struggled um, with that. And I'm like, okay, I'm just going to start podcasting because it's a lot easier because I can pace myself. You do live things, you get nervous. Like it's a, it's a real thing. Yeah, for right? sure. Um, and so um, what was I going on? You wanted me to tell. So yeah, so I've been doing it on and off. So basically it's just a music show. I highlight a bunch of stuff from everything in the kitchen sink means literally my show contains all different genres. I don't pigeonhole bands. I don't pigeonhole genres. So you'll find like, like a metal show or like, no, uh, no. So like I'll even world. throw like, yeah, like sometimes I'll put in some country, but very rarely, like there's certain wheelhouses that I am not dabbling a lot in. Like there's like black metal right. that I dabble in, but I'm not a big fan but okay. I mean, I dabble in pop, but like I have certain wheelhouses that are my main wheelhouses. So it's like dub, reggae, ska, not third, not fourth, kind of picky on that. Um, but the thing is, is that the whole, but I also do a big thing where I find a lot of bands from Bandcamp. I'm a huge Bandcamp supporter, been for, for forever and a day. And mm-hmm. the whole point is, is that to highlight bands from around the world, um, not just in Canada, but also around the world, um, because they somebody needs to hear them and you just throw them all on the show and you get excited about it and you hope that sharing the music remember how when you're in high school i don't know when i was in high school people would go and send you mixtapes like your friends would yep. make you mixtape and they're like you need to hear this stuff that's that's literally how i run my show it's kind of oh, like awesome. it's like a mixtape of some good stuff some stuff that you like to kind of hook you so you know i that's i was awesome. going up right i'll talk about a band that's like, oh, this band's like Joy Division, but not Joy Division, so that you would be like, oh, I like that band. Maybe you like. I that. like Joy Division, so. <laughs> so maybe I might like that, right? Yeah. So the the thing is that I had a hard time, um, and it being an on and off, and the reason why I've had a hard time is because I'm a woman, and um, being a woman and being an, an a, and a podcaster of any sort. Um, makes it really hard to be in spaces that are um, more male dominated. For sure. That's totally fair. (laughs) Yeah. 
So the thing is, is that when we're talking about how these spaces are, I don't think that men, and I, I say this to your listeners and, and you, Corey, as generally speaking, is that I don't think that men understand how important their allyship is and how that allyship needs to look for women right. to feel included in the spaces. Right. right? I can understand so, that. Yeah, yeah. So the funny thing is, is men are like always about, you know, being helpful, maybe like, you know, you being in the space. But the thing is that when there's misogyny in that space, they're never there to shut it down. Right. Yeah. No, that's, that's accurate. <laughs> so that becomes, that becomes a little bit of a problem. Um, I've had, I've been on a couple of like radio stations um, overseas where there's been misogyny you know, yeah. um, and it's just, you know, subtle stuff. And people don't seem to realize how subtle things are. Like, um, you know, it's like, well, Nikki, you're overreacting or Nikki, you're just being emotional, you know, or, you know, but it, I'm not. But the thing is, is that if a guy was to do it, it wouldn't be an issue. So it's like to keep me in my place. Right. Right. Yeah. To keep you from like actually bringing up the issues yeah. because, oh yeah well no you're just overreacting and this is what we know about women is that they overreact right yeah, exactly and so the other <laughs> thing is, is yeah, right and it's also the thing is that they tend to in certain in certain spheres i'm sure this also happens in like uh, fan fiction it also happens in like comic air scenes it happens in the music scene so like they're i call them the boys clubs right okay. and so the thing is, is that it's hard to get into them the thing, right. And it, when you're into it, then you really have to prove that you know everything. And if you don't know everything, you're fucked. If you screw up one thing, you're fucked by that person. Yeah. Like that, that's it. Yeah. You're done. Boy, like they're, and the thing is, is that nobody knows. And I've had this, it was really interesting. So um, a couple of weeks ago on Twitter, I'm going to call Twitter, fuck it. If that's what it is. Yep. It'll all it's be Twitter. Twitter for me. Since Elon like can go fuck himself. This is right? I cannot. I have met so many people on Twitter and I love Twitter. If there's a, a unique engagement that you don't get anywhere else, and I've tried, tried other platforms, it's just not the same. Um, sure. But I had this like little um, thing that uh, one of my followers said, hey, you know what, Nikki, you love bands so much. Why don't you do a band for a letter of a day thing? And I'm like, you know what? Why not? I got nothing better to do. So I went and I did that and that's 20 fucking seven days of that shit. And that's a little, wow. but the thing is, is that cause it's like, we have to add the numbers and the whatever have you. The thing is that what people don't realize when they're playing along, they're playing, right? But when you're the one doing the hosting stuff, you're interacting with everybody. You're engaging with everybody. You're continuing the conversation, you know, and right. there was like, and I love the engagement. It was amazing. It's, I haven't had that much engagement in a long time, which was fabulous. And there were times that, you know, uh, some of my followers were posting bands that I've never heard of. And I was excited right. about this. That's the whole point of this game. And so um, I would pop it up in a quote and I'm like, I don't know this band. I don't know this band. This person keeps on bringing up bands that I don't know. So you need to follow this person. And I find it very interesting. And I'm going to say it out here. It's funny because very few of the men pointed out the bands that I was. Uh, ah. Right. Yeah. Right. So yeah, they didn't. Yeah. So and the funny thing is that the first the first three days that I was doing it, people would say, oh, but I thought you liked this band, Nikki. And I thought you liked this band. So then I had to I actually put put out um, uh, a standard for myself. And so my standard was that I had to own at least two albums um, from the band and I had to listen to them in the last three years. And okay. I'm and the read like I have a lot of new like a stupid amount of music as I should. Right. Uh, because I have a music podcast. Um, right. and so the thing is, is that like, if I haven't played the band in three years, they're out of my brain. Do you know what I mean? And so right. it doesn't yeah, mean I don't fair. like them. And I mean, if I only have one track from a band, I don't care how amazing that track is. I'm not going to put them up there because that this is going to take forever. Then my tweets are going to be like, you know, threads for the letter of the day. <laughs> I don't want right. a thread for the letter of the day. So I went and I put myself, uh, in a, a restricted thing. And so people started saying, oh, but you missed this band. You missed this band. So I'm like, okay, now I need to put some kind of qualifier on it. So this way that, you know, I'm not going to have these guys saying I've missed this band or this band. And the right. adorable thing is that they weren't going after anybody else for it, just me. But then I realized maybe it's because I'm the one that's hosting this game nonsense and that's why they're coming for me. That's possible, um, I suppose. 
<laughs> Hypothetically, I don't know. Hypothetically, um, good but my favorite, good <laughs> my favorite part is this one person came up and they're like, you don't know, uh, you don't know Q-tip. And I said, no, I don't. And then like, oh, you don't know, you don't know Questlove. And so, and then I got kind of cranky in the tweet and I said, um, I do know Questlove. I said, but I don't know every um, side project that those band members did. And just because you happen to like a band doesn't mean I have to know the band. And that's a yeah. dick move for you to expect that. And yeah. I, I tweeted that out. And then it, there was no apology. There was just a, a like on the tweet. So there's no accountability. And this is the other thing is, is that, and I get it. It's tough when you're put in your place, you know, or if you can't read sure. well. And uh, anytime I make a mistake on the internet, I believe it's important to say, oh, shit, I didn't read that right. Or I didn't even... You know what I mean? Like it's, it's yeah. not, it's what's you're behind a freaking screen. Where's your phone? Why do you think you got some ego? Nobody <laughs> sees you anyways. You can yeah. say, sorry, like not actually you, you. It's not you. <laughs> you're not in front of somebody and you can't even. So to me, if you can't even say, Oh shit, I fucked up behind a fucking keyboard. How are you going to do it to somebody's face? You yeah. Can't, that's right. Clearly then you got, yeah. you got fragile ego. That's how I see it. If people can't say, oh, yep. shit, man, I fucked up behind a keyboard, they can't say it to your face. And that means that they're, I don't want to say that they're garbage, but they're garbage-ish, maybe. <laughs> and they, need to, they need to reevaluate and self-reflect on how they do things. That's, yeah, that's fair. I so, think that's fair. And the other thing is, is that I noticed in the music scene, and this, this is my favorite part, is, is that I do it as a hobby. So mm-hmm. the, the greatest, the freedom of doing it as a hobby, as a woman, is I can call out every single man for being an asshole or being right. racist or whatever have you, and I can walk away. Yeah, yeah. And I can your say, income is dependent on it, kind of thing. And my income's not yeah. dependent on it at all. Like I've had a couple of like, and I, I try to minimize. And like people who have Patreon supporters or whatever have you, or Ko-Fi or whatever have you, and they help. And the, it's really important because it actually keeps helps keep the lights on to these things because like. These things are not cheap to do. Like I had a web server, you know, and I had much better equipment. I have shit equipment now, but like I have to rebuild that nonsense. But the thing is, and then I buy the music that takes, that's, you know, people, bands yeah. would try to go and say, well, I'll give you the, the, the stuff. And I'm like, no, if I really like it, I will buy it from you because yeah. and this is the, this is the key. And the reason why I do that is because I don't want to owe any band a favor. Mm, fair. Yeah. Right. right. So the the thing is, is that like and this is where it's different. If I was working at um, like a radio college radio station or if I was working at like a big radio station or stuff like that, they have program directors who give you this stuff. And the whole point is, is they get that those songs from the bands. Right. And then the, they yeah. just cross their fingers. But I'm just some like little chump change girl. Right. Right. Even though I had license. So I had my resound license and I had my yeah. SoCan license. Yeah. Um, to actually do this as legit as possible. Um, but they would think that I would owe them. They're like, well, you didn't play my song. And I'm like, motherfucker. So I'm not. So the, the funny thing is, is that I've learned over the last 13, 14 years of doing this. I don't remember how many. It's a long time. Is, is I've had to set up boundaries in order to deal with men. And mm. it's, come, it's come out with me looking like a tough bitch. <clears throat> and I'm, I'm swear I'm not, I'm like, well, maybe, but I'm nice. But the thing is that these boundaries have been put because the thing is, yeah. is that men have abused them. And I can only imagine for women um, who have to work in these spaces and get paid, who have to say nothing. And then yeah. those guys are going to go and say, well, you know, so-and-so didn't have a problem. No, you don't know. So-and-so didn't have a problem. You Just know, Sally, they didn't say, it Sally yeah. you're not saying Sally didn't have a problem or Patricia didn't have a problem. They probably did have a problem with your damn ass. They can't say anything because nothing's going to happen about it. You yeah, know, okay. and there's like no accountability. I mean, the other thing that you can, if you want to jump in and ask questions, you're more welcome to. I really like to talk. So, <laughs> oh, no, it's all good. Um, I just, uh, I, I was thinking like because, uh, I, I ran a podcast in 2000, from 2013 to about 2019. Uh, that was like mainly atheist oriented, oh, but wow. we, uh, we played music halfway through the episode so yep. that we could like in the studio, we could take a break and, uh, so I paid for a, music. Yeah. 
I had my SoCan license and I played whatever music I could, you know, I felt like playing that week and three songs or four songs while we sat and chatted, not about the show. Yeah. And like, yeah, it, it was, it's, it's a, uh, the act of playing music that other people are going to hear is something that is very enjoyable. So I can, I can totally relate to the desire to do that as a podcast. Yeah. But Again, I, I didn't have to live in like these, I didn't go in any circles of like musicians and like DJs oh. or like any of the, yeah. I didn't see any of the politics behind the music, right? Yeah. So that's, that's the funny thing is, is that like, uh, because I wanted my podcast shared out in other places. So like the first place I was on was a, a UK website. Uh, and the funny thing is that they picked me because they thought my voice was adorable. So I apparently okay. have a very good radio voice and they thought it was adorable that I had an accent to them. I have an accent and they just right. love the fact that I swore. And so when they saw even what I look like, they're just like, Oh, she's a pretty bird. Cause that's what they call chicks. Over okay. There. So, um, <laughs> and so this is like when I was in my thirties, like in my mid thirties. So it was kind of like, that was a whole different story. So I was looking good then. Um, but uh, so what had happened was that I wasn't actually, brought on because of necessarily my music tastes. I was okay. brought on as a piece of candy kind of thing. And then I kind right. of, but it was fine. Like, I mean, I grew into my own skin and I became more confident and I started doing other things. I learned how to use editing equipment. Like I knew nothing, like this was all completely new to me and I was very excited about it. And then they ended up being misogynist. They ended up being racist. And I'm like, you can't have racist people on your radio show and then ex expect me to be here. So we have two choices here. You can either, you know, let go of your buddy who's a racist or I leave. And so yeah. they didn't want me to leave because I had a really good pull with their uh, audience because I'm the Canadian who swears. Um, right. Which apparently is a thing. Um, and then, uh, and that was fine. But then what happened was is that the person who was let go and it's weird because it's a hobby. Like you're not getting fired from anything. You're not losing a job. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like everybody's yeah. doing this as a hobby. So then there was a smear campaign on Twitter against me because no. this guy was no, oh, it was so good. And so there's a smear campaign against me because, because of it. And so I'm like, oh, so this is what I have to work with. All right. So that's lesson one. Right. And then lesson two was when, you know, men were demanding things of me and I'm like, I have boundaries. And then they'd start getting aggressive with me or passive aggressive. My favorite is, is that men did not like me, men in the scene, not just men in general, men in the scene did not like me talking about my own stories and me um, talking about being um, a sexual assault survivor. And oh, it was, really? yeah, that's pretty funny. Um, th th it was complicated for them. So, and the reason why it was complicated is because I went after musicians. So, ah, and I had no yeah. problem doing that. So this is where it's like, yeah. Nikki, you can't. And so they would say, my favorite thing is, is that I'm a big Joe Strummer fan. And so there's this uh, Joe Strummer song that's called Johnny Appleseed. And they, the motherfuckers would go and quote Johnny Appleseed lyrics to me. It's like, if you want some of the honey, you don't go killing all the bees. So they're basically telling me that I need to play nice or people aren't going to play nice with me. That's the most subtle way of doing it. And they weaponize Joe Strummer. Yeah. And that, that that's is cool. like, that's some wild inner. And it wasn't just one guy. If it was one guy, it would be they all like, there was right. like a whole bunch of them that did it. And I'm like, why are you guys doing this? And the reason yeah. why they do this is because they think that this is okay to do because they don't think that women should be outspoken about certain things. And there's a way to do right. it. And so, like, I understand that men want to, like, people, not just men, people want to listen to their bands that they like that are problem, and I'm fine with that, problematic bands. I call them problematic bands. Sure. So so the thing is, is that <laughs> you're like, sure, I call it, because the thing is, is that people are like, well, you need to separate, we shouldn't need to separate art, but this is my way of compromising Right. Because there needs to be. I personally try not to separate my politics from my music taste, but that's fine. <laughs> but, but no, but see, the thing is, is that people really love like Chris Brown or they like really love Ugh. R. Kelly. Right. Yeah. And yeah. they're kind of like horrible assholes. You know, my favorite is, is that people and this is like this is the hill that I will burn the hill down and just change everything and just slay everybody is Gigi Allen. So I okay. it's it's like it is. 
and the punk scene, Gigi Allen is like known to be, and I'm grateful he's dead. Um, the, that um, he's like the man who took, you know, uh, took no prisoners. He was so punk rock. He was so authentic because he shot on stage and he, you know, he punched men, but he punched women and he's shooting up on stage. And that's so punk rock for sure. It's punk rock, you know, punching. Sure. And he was an equal, he only, he was an equal rights puncher puncher. So he didn't just <laughs> punch women, he punched men. And they said, you know, it's for show, Nikki, calm the fuck down. And I said, that's fine. You're at a punk show. You don't know what you're getting into. Knock yourself out. But also the man yeah. was charged. The man was charged with sexual assault and brutally aggravated assault where he cut up mm. a woman's uh, breasts. He cut up oh, her ass and thighs. And it was so bad that uh, she had a, she had to have skin grafts. Jeez. And he, he went to jail for it. So this is where I was like, no, this is not punk rock. This is a dickhead. Yeah. And so yeah. the thing is, is that you can go and still like his music. You can still talk about him. I'm not saying you need to stop talking about him. But the thing is that we need to address that you can be both things. You can be yeah. a musician and a horrible human being. This one-sided thing that people have, like even with right. Kobe, Kobe Bryant, people were mad. like, dude was a kind of like an asshole. He raped women. You know, yeah, but like, yeah, you're yeah. a basketball player. Not great. You know, not great that you did that. But the thing is that just because you were a good basketball player doesn't mean that you were not this as well. Right. Yeah, that's right. So yeah. we're not one dimensional. And the funny thing is that men struggle with it more. And I hate to make this generalization because they're worried about I don't know if they're worried about the fact is that maybe they've turned blind eye with their friends and they're caught in the middle of it. Right. And I've seen this happen. I've seen it where men will go along because it's easier yeah. for them. And it's, it breaks my heart so much. I had this. Or, uh, uh, or uh, I, sorry to interrupt. I, uh, no, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. There's, there's like, there is a thing with a lot of men who like, they go back through their shady behavior when they're in the past and they go, oh, yeah. well, which lines did I cross? Am I the guy yeah. that I'm now condemning? You know, and, and that's okay. Think, like what? Like yeah, that's okay. That's like okay. you should go back, and I think it's <laughs> yeah. okay to go back and say shit. Like, did I cross those lines? And at least the, the the see, this is what men or people don't seem to understand. We're human. We're gonna make mistakes. We're not going to be perfect. We're gonna do yeah. something that's going to offend someone. I guarantee, whether we wanted them to be offended or not. But the thing is, is that are you self reflectant? Right? Are you? Yeah. You know, are you so are you like realizing the harm that you might have possibly caused? And are you somewhat empathetic about the situation? Say, shit, man, I did some harm and I'm accountable for that harm. It's not that hard. Do you know what I mean? To take some accountability and responsibility. And, and I, commit I make this to doing better and being better. And, 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 and so the, 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 the commit to doing better and being better is real hard. Right. Like, so it's, it's, I think it's even harder to do than to actually admit that you've made your own mistakes because there yeah. is serious social exclusion for doing it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's true. So for instance, like this one, this one, I was part of this one website and they approached me because they loved my podcast and it was in 2014 and they were just starting up. And they were all excited about me. Two of two of the both of the owners approached me and they're like, We want your podcast, we want you to write music reviews. I'm like, I'm not writing shit for you. You can have my podcast. Um, and then um, and it was like for two two years and it was going really well. And I like they were based in the States, so I had a wider audience from the States. And I have okay. pockets of listeners. So I have I have listeners in Japan, I have I have like loyal listeners in New Zealand, which is weird. Um, and then, um, a lot of fans in the UK and little dabbles in, in Canada, like in 2016, I don't know if you've heard of the now magazine here in Toronto, but in 2016, yeah. some crazy person decided to nominate me, um, to, for being uh, best podcast. And I was up Canada, uh, up against Canada land and a bunch of other, oh, yeah. Yeah, like I'm not winning against Canada, Land. but I, I didn't make any sense for me to be there like at all. But the thing is, is that in 2015, 2016, podcasts were kind of not something that was, it was quite as ubiquitous. Right? <laughs> like everybody's got one. 
Um, yeah. So, that, but it's also the thing is, is like different ones who had different themes, right? Um, but this yeah. one guy, he was a writer for 50, uh, I'm not going to say the name. Um, he was a writer for the websites. I will not name names. Um, okay. And then uh, I'll be a gentleman about it or lady about it. Who knows? Um, <laughs> Sounds good. But um, they were glamorizing Gigi Allen. And so I saw wow. it on a tweet and I said, oh, I said, I just caught this. I said, do you, have you always been glamorizing Gigi Allen like this? Because like this is not good. And I got scolded. Right. They went and put slid into my DMs and scolded me. And they're like, Nikki, they're like, why didn't you talk to us in a DM about this? You know, instead of like shaming us on um, on Twitter. Well, and the funny you... thing is that, yeah, <laughs> your oh, opinion is public, you say, like, <laughs> right? See, this, see, thank you, Corey. You knew exactly <laughs> where I was going with this, right? So the thing is that this is my rule: is if you put it out on a public tweet. Anybody can challenge you. Yeah, it's fair now game. Now we have it's fair game. Now we have that thing where you don't have to have the replies and stuff like that. And it's like that's cool. That didn't exist, but anything was fair game. And I didn't do even the quote tweet and flip it up to my followers. I just replied. Like I wasn't shaming mm -hmm. them, right? So I was right. just replying. But the thing is, people read my replies. That's not my problem. I don't know. Um, and so I said to him, I said, I said, I just need you to have the writer to have some accountability. And they're like, well, we do. We have a disclaimer. I said, you have a you have a blanket disclaimer on your website. I said, this person's right. glamorizing Gigi Allen. I said, that person needs to go and say, this person, we understand that this person's problematic, but we still like the tunes. I said, that's all I'm asking you to do. I said, it's not, I'm not yeah. asking a lot. And they're like, well, we can't ask that because it's freedom of speech. I was like, motherfucker. I was like, are you <laughs> fucking bullshitting me? And then, and, I, and they're like, well, now you've embarrassed us in the thing. And I said, so let me tell, ask you this. I said, if, you know, I had, had said this into a DM to you, would you have changed your mind? Right. And they're like, no. And I said, so what's, <laughs> what's the point of DMing you <laughs> yeah, versus doing it on public? Yeah. What does it make? What difference does it make? Be, oh, wait a minute. Hold on. So you're just embarrassed here. And then, again, because men, I'm sorry to generalize, and any man that's getting offensive by this doesn't understand how hard it is for women to be in these spaces. And that's a little bit on you, gentlemen. Um, yeah. But uh, there was this thing, they made it into Gigi Gate. And so I was no targeted Gigi. and harassed. No, I'm not kidding. It was wild on Twitter. So this writer got a bunch of his dude friends and even somehow wrestled a woman, which pissed me off completely. Um, and into harassing me and calling it Gigi Jade, all because I just wanted some accountability. That's it. It's like right, fuck to, play your like, music, write the mu write about the fucking person. I don't give a shit. But you just can't let them because the problem is that when we're writing stuff, right? Whether it be from a music perspective or whether we're writing as a news content perspective, we have to assume that people know fuck all, like zip. Yeah, we're there yeah. to educate them, right? So the thing right. is, is that to me, I think it's important for us. And like Gigi Allen did this shit in the 1990s and he's dead. So the thing is, you have to go to G. You remember GeoCities? You have to go to GeoCities to get this stuff. I have it. Right. But like, you think anybody's going to know what GeoCities is? The, the no. millennials don't know what that is. They're not going to look no. there. You think they're going to go into the Wayback Machine and look for that, that stuff? No. Right. Oh. No, that's not that's happening. That's not happening. That's not happening. And the thing is, is that some things that were on the internet, like when there were like our fanzines and stuff like that in the early 90s, you know what I mean? The fanzines that happened, um, or the yeah. GeoCities and stuff, nobody went and transferred that to new websites. So that shit is being left to die. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So and, it's just, I, it's gone basically. Yeah. Well, I, I, there's the links kind of still work. I'm debating about doing a kind of weird project of like trying to save the old internet, but I don't, I'm too old and I don't have enough time to do that, but. Somebody yeah, needs to, right. if you are inspired listeners, I will find me at my Twitter handle, which is Nikki, EK, e, what is my Twitter handle? EKS. And I will support that nonsense in any way I can. Somebody needs to save the old internet because yeah, that, sure. that that's like a history book, right? And who, who yep. reads history books now? Nobody. <laughs> historians. Nobody reads. That's about it. <laughs> that's about it. Right? Just, just yeah. historians to teach history class and yeah. How many of us are really taking history classes? You, you only take it if it's required, right? Yeah. Fuck, that's we right. don't need history. We don't need to know what happened in the past. Fuck <laughs> that shit. Why would we ever learn from it? 
why would we we never do that's the funny part <laughs> that's, yeah that's right yeah so it sounds like there's quite a bit of like say misogyny and like uh, a lack of accountability within like yeah. the music industry which I, it's I think in the whole enter entertainment industry and the what the funny yeah. part is is it's what bothered me is i didn't i was surprised maybe or i was being i won't say surprised i was naive I thought that it wouldn't happen to people who are hobbyists. Ah, right. I thought it only happened to people who were getting paid because why would you gate it, keep a hobbyist? Right. Yeah. So I was, that's where I was surprised by it. And it, yeah. it had like, I have a, a few women pod, I have a few women podcasters uh, that I know and uh, they've gone through the same things. They've had some very unique content so I have one friend who does uh, a podcast. It's a, a pornonomy podcast. And so okay. she has a lot of problems because when she does this, the people make the assumptions because she does a podcast about porn, then somehow she should have dick pics sliding into her DMs. No, she's a, she's a comedian. Of course guys she's think that. Of, of course guys think that. But of course they do, right? <laughs> so the thing is that that's because – no, but it's weird though because women are not allowed to. This is another thing: women are not allowed to be uh, joke about things in sexual nature. We're not allowed, right. and 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 yeah. when we do, it, it's weird because men can go and joke. Like I see, I have very funny people on Twitter that I follow, and they have the funniest, you know, uh, sexual jokes, and I can't retweet them. And people will right. say, "Why can't you retweet them?" And I'm like, "Because somebody's going to slide into my DMs, and they're going to yeah. think I want something because I've I've done that." And isn't that weird? Like, I can't just have be. I can't just have fun like the guys can. And it's like, yeah. like I'm not sliding into your DMs because you've made a you you've made a sexy joke. Do you know what I mean? Right. But because yeah, I've okay. made a sexy joke, somehow it's it's, it's implied that ah, I want something. Fair game, ah, now. I, fair I can, game. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> right. See this, and this is what <laughs> yeah. we talk about with the the misogyny is is that they the the rules. And the expectations of what women are to do and what not to do because of men's interpretations and, and expectations yeah. of women and their characteristics, right? So because I happened to my friend, I had another friend who did, I, just, I don't know how she, she did a podcast it was called Screams and Moans. Okay. And so she did a hybrid of horror films and porn. And I guess it was because yes, like, because of screaming and moaning, right? So the difference right. between it, and it was actually cute, but again, men and DMs. Right. So yeah, it's like, like just, and the thing is that women are creating this content. This is the funny part is women are creating this content so that women can feel that they can have this space to talk about so that women can feel empowered to have this space. So the thing right. is, is that, and, and, um, and it doesn't happen in the DYI scene, but it does happen in, in the entrance. Like if you're being paid, but women in DYI scenes, we are always there to champion other women. Like we're like we're a force. And the funny thing is, is that if you know a woman podcaster and you're sliding in, you can guarantee that they've they've told other podcasters about you. Just so you know, because um, we 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 keep we keep yeah. ourselves safe. Um, yeah, but the, sure. the the other thing is is that. Um, you know, when you're in, uh, if you're getting paid for it, it's like you want to keep that space because you had to fight for it. There's no room for somebody yeah. else. You can't lift somebody else up, you know, because you yeah. put the work into it, and that's awful. So yeah, this is this is where the, 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 this is where the problem is. It's like the paid is like the there women are gatekeeping women or anybody actually. Um, we can even talk a little bit about trans. Like I believe trans women are, are women, you know, and I don't mm -hmm. understand like. We can, you can have me on another show and we can do a whole entire gender, gender conference conversation. And I would love to do that with you. Um, but I, I'm just always very fascinated is that many people who come from different, you know, marginalized communities, just they, they have space and they don't give, they don't make space for others who might be of marginalized communities and we don't lift mm -hmm. them up enough. And, and that becomes a problem. For sure. Right? Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 weird from my perspective, like uh, because obviously I'm a white cis hetero dude, so like I I don't have these barriers in front of me the same way. Mm -hmm. uh, like 
No, you <laughs> don't. But the thing is, is that because you don't, you can amplify others who have those barriers. And the thing is, is that because you're amplifying, and I've seen your tweets, Corey, and you do amplify others who are in those marginal spaces and you do give them space, which is fabulous. And I know that you get teared down a lot for it too by other people. And it's, yeah. <laughs> it's awful. But I mean... <laughs> And you're taking one for several teams because if every cis heteronormative white male was like you, the world would be a little bit better of a place. A little bit better. Right? Uh, <laughs> a little bit better. A little bit better. And so like the thing is that what we don't understand is, is that a lot of these rules and stuff like that, societal rules have been put in by men, white men, yeah. white yeah. heteronormative white men. Rich so men. <laughs> And so the thing is is that this is the standard that we want, and then this is the standard we'll have. And it's usually British colonialism. So this is the thing is, is that it's like, is it really Canada's standard? No, bitch, it's not Canada's standard. It's not British really. colonial standard. That's what it yeah. is, right? Or yeah. and if you're in Quebec, it is a French colonial standard. It's still colonized standards. Yeah, right? that's right. Yeah. And then, of this course, is- you got to add like the – there's in the – Various circles. There's the Catholic colonizer uh, yep. edition, or the oh, or and that may, yeah, the, I love edition. how you said that. The, the Catholic <laughs> cololonizer edition. That's it. It is. It's not just about it being. You're so perfect. It's not just about it being. Um, just being the British. Then you got your different editions of the colonization based on religion, right? Yeah. So that's right. That's, that's a good mess, and it still kind of <laughs> happens, you know. My oh, yeah. favorite is is that like my favorite is is that people are very angry against Islam, and they're like, "Oh, Islam is taking rights away from women and stuff like that." I've lived in two Muslim countries. <laughs> um, okay. I'm I'm white. I am not Muslim, and I had fire engine red hair in uh, one country, and I had black and purple hair. I did not die. Um, but the thing is that because we don't know anybody that goes to these countries, or we don't look into it as much. We're just, we're, our lives are in a vacuum because we don't hang around people. If you don't hang around certain people, you're never going to know the world is what it is, yeah, right? That's right? Get to meet people out of your own culture, your own identity and stuff like that. And then you see how things really potentially work. I say generally, because then you'll have some people go and say, you know, uh, well, I didn't grow up with any trans, so trans didn't exist. And the funny, uh, like I had uh, a friend who, a coworker and uh, she was, she was trans and it was in the nineties. They existed back then. They existed forever. But the thing is that you might've not been in uh, an environment where it was okay for them to come out to you. Right. Or they didn't feel that they could have. And this is what I don't understand what people don't seem to understand. Right. Like I'm queer. My parents don't know still to this day. I'm like, I'm 48 and my parents don't know I'm queer. And will they ever? Because really it's, no, because like their their heads can't. I'll, I'll tell my their heads can't wrap around the situation. It's adorable. So my dad, um, when we came back uh, last year, we repatriated back to Canada. My dad was telling me about my nephew who's who's gay, but it was how he did it. It's so funny because he's like he's a boomer, right? So he's like uh, he's like uh, you know uh, your nephew is, uh, and then he did like the 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 limp wrist thing. Like I'm in the car with him, and he's doing the limp oh, wrist really? thing. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. It's, like, it's, so, it's so 80s of you. And yeah, I'm like, what are you like doing, Dad? School. I'm like, I oh, knew no. what he was talking about, but I didn't want to. I didn't want to play into it, right? So I'm like, yeah. what are you? 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 He's what? You know? And then he did the limp wrist thing, and I'm like, Dad, what are you trying to tell me? And I'm like, I don't understand. And I'm playing dumb again. And then he's like, you know, light in the loafer. So I'm like, Dad, I don't understand. My dad is so angry with me. <laughs> light in the and he's loafer. like, <laughs> and he's so angry. And he's like, you know what I'm talking about. And I'm like, Dad, I don't have a clue what you're talking about. I did, but I wanted to be an asshole. And then he's like, you know, awesome. gay. And I said, oh, well, Dad, well, I said, well, why didn't you just say that? I said, Are you, do you have a problem with your 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 grandson being gay? No, I don't have a problem with my grandson being gay. Well, clearly you do because you did a limp wrist <laughs> and you said light in the loafers and you couldn't say the word gay, right? Yeah, and then that's he's right. Like, you can't use the word gay? What, what's the problem here? <laughs> Then my dad didn't talk to me for about a good three months, but um, he had to calm down from, from, but the thing is, is that he was injured by the fact is, is that I kind of had him in it and I could have been, yeah. but the thing is that I needed to pull it out of him because I needed, like, we need to normalize these words and stuff. And 
whatever have you. And it, yeah. it, like, I'm not expecting everybody to understand it. I'm not ever expecting everybody uh, to, to like these things and these changes. These changes are uh, new for many people. But the thing is, is that if it's not harming anybody, then what business is it of yours? Right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Right. So this like, is where it comes down to it. Yeah. Like you're, there's like, everybody's still a person, right? Like, so they deserve you saying, you know, treating them like a person rather than being all like, uh, using euphemisms about being gay or. <laughs> yeah. And, and you know what the thing is, is that a lot of the times when people do this, it's because of fear. And the thing is, yeah. is that like, and, and so this is what people, you know, know, like I've noticed because when I, went to two Muslim countries, people lost their shit because they're like, oh, you're going to get converted. I'm like, well, I'm going to get converted to what? And they're like, you're going to, I'm going to become, I'm going to become what? And they're like, you're going to have, you were not going to be able to wear short skirts. I'm like, I've never worn a short skirt. So why would that bother <laughs> me? All of a like maybe you yeah. don't go because yeah. if you like wearing short skirts, then maybe you shouldn't go, but your tattoos. And I'm like, I'm not Muslim. It doesn't freaking matter. Like they don't yeah. seem they're like they're you're gonna get stoned. I'm like for what? And and the funny so there the thing is that there are two and I will clarify this and because there are two extremely extremely very strict uh, Muslim regimes and mm -hmm. uh, they are highly oppressive to women and that is the KSA which is also known as Kingdom Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and there's also yeah. Iran. So the thing is is that those are definitely kind of like the not good places, you know, who right. will jail you for not wearing, covering your hair and stuff like that. However, the other Muslim countries, and there's like 57 of them, and many yeah, of them are right. not in the Middle East. Like Indonesia has the highest population. Indonesia has the highest population of Muslims in the world. Yeah. But we don't talk about them, right? So, um, and I'll tell you, I've been to no. Jakarta. And it's wild there. So Jakarta, like they have pork, they have alcohol flowing all over the place. However, if you get on a plane and you have drugs on the plane, not that I had drugs, but they make sure to announce it, you will die. They tell you that there's right. a death penalty. And it's a, like we were traveling from um, Bali to Jakarta and like there was an announcement from the, the captain. He's like, just so you are all aware, you know, uh, passengers, that's the... Uh, you know, for carrying drugs uh, to uh, Indonesia, to Jakarta, is a death penalty. So basically, I guess what they're telling you is either you flush it down the toilet, hide it underneath somebody's thing, because if you try to put it through customs, you're screwed. You're done. <laughs> I just, I laughed. Yeah. I, I thought it was very funny. Wow. So, right? Because then we're like, that's pretty, that's pretty serious. And that goes, for, they don't even care who you are. Like, you could be white, you could be Canadian right. or American, it doesn't matter. You were told the rule, you didn't want to listen. Don't yep. get stuck with pot, I guess, right? So I can't I can't say I'm a fan of that, but I get well, different okay, countries have give, different yep. rules. And so the thing yep. is is that for instance, like it's not legal for you to have pot in the States, right? Right. So and it's legal everywhere, um, here in Canada. <laughs> yep. Um but the thing is that you know the rules when you're going into a country. So it's like kind of like the no shoes, no shirt, no service kind of thing at the store Preparing. kind of thing. Sometimes yeah. you need to prepare for those kind of things, right? Yeah, and right. get to know how things are. But yeah, so the rule of thumb that uh, the takeaway message is men. My takeaway message for men is, is that open their minds, for everybody to open their minds, get to know people who are different than them, as quirky as them, before making judgments and blanket statements on individuals of any minority group or marginalized group. Yep. That's huge. Yeah. And the other thing is that if you see something, so I'll tell you a funny story, is, is that there was this one time there was this drummer we're at, like we're like we're on uh, we're on Queen Street West. I don't know what we're doing. So there's like an A and R person with me and uh, a drummer, and we're just shooting the shit because it's what you do. And so they're talking about this is my favorite. They're talking about hate fucking a woman. So <laughs> right. So okay. this is so this is the thing that men talk about. And so because I'm a rough and tumble uh, tomboy, right? Which tomboys are still acceptable, which I find funny. We can go into a segue about, oh, how come we're allowed to have women are allowed to be heavily manly characteristics, but men are not allowed to have feminine characteristics. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. Have me on a show again. Anyways, so <laughs> um, 
what the what the thing is is that that, that they're talking about it, and this one guy is like, yeah, I'd fuck her too. I'd hate fuck her too, and the other guy's like, I hate fuck her too. And I said, guys, you're both ugly. I will get to fuck her before both of you will. And the thing is that their mouths just dropped. And so it was the only thing that I could say to shut them. And they didn't know I was queer. And it was the only thing that I could say to shut them up. And it was something so, um, so out there because what was I going to do? Say this is inappropriate. I can't say that. They don't care. Otherwise they wouldn't be saying what they're saying already. Exactly. But the funny part is, is that they're, because I'm so, I'm, I'm so blunt, I'm so abrasive and I'm so loud and kind of sweary. They just figured that I was going to go along with this. Right. Mm -hmm. And so Mm -hmm. the thing is is that when I shot them, it was more to kind of like embarrass them. But what I really would have liked to have done is read them the riot act and say, you know, by you saying these things, you're actually making women feel unsafe kind of thing, you know? Right. Yeah. And the thing is that we don't seem to understand what women have to go through. Like if you walk down the street, like, you know, you're not sizing up, you're not sizing up uh, a woman to see if she's coming for you. Right. No, that's right. So, but if I go on the TTC and I was talking to my friend about this, I was picking her up from union station just this weekend, um, past weekend. And then um, there's this, it was wild because you know, Toronto is crazy. So there's this guy, he's drunk, it's day drunk, and he's got a Starbucks cup, and it's it's a clear cup. And I could smell the alcohol, and it was, I'm like, okay, this guy's drunk. And I'm wearing my panda hat, and I'm pretty excited about my panda hat, because like, I feel like I'm a five-year-old, and I shouldn't be wearing this, but my friend bought it, and it's cute. So That's awesome. It is adorable. And so the thing is that, like, so he gets up from his seat to stand beside me, and I'm like, this is not going to go well. And so he's kind of falling around and stuff like that. And I'm looking where his knees are knees are placed because the first place I'm going to go is I'm going to knock you down from your knees. So I always size up how drunk the person is, how fast I can. And this is scary. If you're thinking when a guy sees a drunk woman, this is not going through their head, right? right. When a woman no. sees a drunk person, no matter where they are, like a male, I'm like, I'm sizing them up. Can I take this person down? How fast can I take this person down? And am I going to do enough damage and enough where I can walk away? Right. Yeah. And so the thing is that I'm, I'm sizing up all of this in the head. And then he ended up getting off. I'm like, like, I don't have to think anymore about this. I can yeah. go on with my day. And the funny thing is, is that I don't know why people invented earpods. Like I get it, but like I loved the headphones um, because then people, I was hoping that they would understand that that was my boundary and I didn't want to talk yeah, to them. Yeah, that's right. I don't right? want to talk to you. Yeah. Right. But the thing is, I don't wear that, like the big headphones. I have always the earbuds. And there's been times on the TTC that people will, men, not women, men, women will do it if they're lost, but men will come up to me and, and have conversations with me. And they say the weirdest things. Like they don't make any sense. So there's like, the one guy, he's like, he's like, well, hi. And he's like, I'm like, hi. He's like, I'd like to be your friend. I'm like, I have friends. I don't need any more friends. And he's like, well, you can always use my friends. I'm like, actually, no, I don't. I'm all out of needing friends. And he's like, well, and then he starts trying to talk. And I'm like, look, I'm married. And then he kept on talking. I'm like, I don't know what part of I'm married. You're not understanding what I'm married. And he's like, so you can't have friends. And I'm like, again, I have friends. I have lots of friends. Right. So, but I, and the thing is, is that where men are going to go and say, the thing is, is that, well, it's unfair to them because the thing is, is that they want women to be approachable. And I understand this puts, I, I understand that the, the thing is that they say, approaching, you don't know. I don't know. Well, see, but this is, but the thing, see, this is tough. And I understand where the men's perspective is. Like I do, I get it. It's like, if I yeah. see a beautiful woman on this, on the streetcar or the subway, I want to be able to go and up to her. And I want to get to know her because I am enamored by her or whatever have you. And I want to kind of date her. So I should be allowed to approach her. You guys all fucked that shit up when you allowed women not to be safe in spaces. So the problem is, is that one in three women are sexually assaulted before they're the age of 25. And I just told you that I'm a sexual assault survivor. So now you all know one. I guarantee you know more. So the thing is that I wish that men could have had those opportunities. I get why those things are important to them. But the thing is that when you don't allow women to have safe spaces and continue that, you'll never get to fucking talk to us on the, on the street car. You're, subways you're being so much more generous than I am. <laughs> well, what would you do? What, what would you do? Well, no, I, do, I just, I just don't, I just don't think that it's necessary to approach people you don't know in the middle of 
public. See, like, but I it had just it happen. And it, it turned out, I'll tell you a cute, another cute, <laughs> I love my story. So when I was like, I was like 17, 16, 17, I'm on the bus and I'm going to school. And there is this cute little punk rock boy. He's taking the bus too. And, you know, we're eyeing each other, but we're not saying anything. And it's like, it's not the school bus. It's like, the, you know, public transportation. Like the transit. Yeah. And so, and then we're eyeing each other. We're not saying anything. And then, I don't know, about three weeks after, he hands me a mixtape. Just okay. slides it to me with a note inside. So the thing is, is that that's a huge, huge, like. That's, well, I mean, that's legit almost. like It is almost. Legit. So basically, <laughs> men, if you really want a girl, like, you need to, like, you need, you need to make sure that you see them often. <laughs> But I don't know if that be happens. Patient. To be like, patient. <laughs> but I mean, is it being patient or was it? See, the funny thing is, is that now you can think about it. We we're taking the same bus because we're going in the same area. Right. So it kind of made sense. Yeah. But, you know, there might be some men that may, might think that this is an invite to stock. No, it's right. not an invite to stock. Intentionally. Yeah. Intentionally go. It's and like, ride oh, the I'm going to go intentionally day. ride now so I can see this girl. So I can go give her that yeah. mixtape because Nikki said so. No, okay. stalking. don't do that either. Don't do that either. <laughs> <laughs> that's not helpful because women have been stalked and it is seriously fearful for women. Yeah. And the yeah, thing is that right. if women have not been, and this is what people don't understand is that, you know, just because, and this is the other thing is that just because you as a woman, like, and, and there are women who have not legit experienced this fear or had, they have not legit had these experiences or felt that these experiences were you know, something that violated them. And that is legit too, but you don't speak for all women. So the thing is that the, if, if somebody's telling you that they feel threatened by it, that should be, that should speak volumes because yeah, harm is right. being done to someone, right? So the thing is, is we can't correct society if we're not addressing the harm. So it's like, oh, you can say, oh, well, I've been to a club and I'm not bothered when a guy grinds up, you know, on my ass or something like that. Okay, good for you. I'm glad that you're yeah. not, you know, upset or bothered by uh, a man grinding your ass. However, if you see it happen to another woman and you feel that she's uncomfortable about it, you know, you, you need to do something about it. There's this really cool, I'm going to plug somebody else's stuff here. Her name is Julie Lalonde. You can find her on Twitter. I have a bit of a crush on her. Um, she is a fantastic feminist. She has this um, free web series that she does, uh, and it's called Bystander uh, Intervention. And so okay. basically you, you go on a, her webinar and then you learn the different stages and different ways that you can do bystander intervention when you feel something is not right that's happening. And, oh. can, and there's many different ways to do it. Where you, And I think that this is where it comes in, where some people are afraid to intervene because they're afraid of getting hurt. And that's legit. Like, do you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, you true. don't yeah. want to go into a scene where some woman's getting accosted, you know, at a nightclub or something like that. You step in and then somehow you're sucker punched. I get it, guys. But there are other ways around yeah. it, right? Where you can. And then the thing is that you're showing you're an ally right to this woman, but you're also kind of showing the dude in a, in a subtle way that he shouldn't be doing this shit. Like there's like, yeah. I, I've taken the, I've taken the bystander thing and I was like, Oh shit. I didn't even think of that. Oh shit. I didn't even think of that. This is like, you know, you see somebody in distress and then she tells you the signs of distress and what to look for. Okay. And then she'll tell That's you something that probably everybody should have right? in there. And, yeah. and she does it for freaking free. So follow Julie Lalonde. Uh, I'll, I'll send you the, I don't know if you do show notes. I don't know what, what I think you do. Yeah, show I do full show notes and everything on my website. So. And so like, that's the best way to be an ally, educate yourself and make sure that, you know, people of any marginalized community. And the funny thing is, is that even though I'm in I'm, my marginalized communities, I intersect twice, right? Well, three times because I have MS, but the thing is that I'm still white. So I still have a better than anybody who's black or a person of color. Right. Right? And so this yeah. is this is what we don't seem to realize is that the system the system's not broken it's rigged. Yep. Yeah, hundred percent. Well, we're actually almost at an hour already. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> I, I, talk a lot. I talk a lot. I was so not I kidding. Guess, you. Yes. The, the the next thing is uh, to get you to plug your stuff before, uh, or I guess first, is there something that we need to mention before we go? Oh, okay. So. Um, 
I don't know. I have a sub like basically, basically if you, if you, you want to know something funny, if you Google search ETKS, some fucking infantry of weaponary nonsense comes of out. Course. No, but the weirdest thing, it wasn't like that back in 2014. Some motherfucker. Uh, yeah. I decided to acronym. I should have, I should have trademarked that asshole. That that's on me, on me. Right. Um, and then I'd have to sue the American government of one infantry or the military government. Like just like, right. and, so it's like Nikki eat chaos. So it's, it's uh, double I double K and eat and then K S. Uh, and it doesn't matter if you do uppercase or lowercase and nobody cares. Um, but, uh, you can find me on most of the social apps. I'm not always active on all the social apps, but I am right. on the social apps um that includes blue sky mastodon um uh, what else is there um my instagram but threads. i'm not i'm not doing i won't do threads because if you <laughs> delete threads you delete your instagram account so oh is that right yeah did you not know that so it's like <laughs> if you to, so if you try to deactivate like say that you're like i need a timeout from instagram and you try to deactivate your account they're like oh we're gonna blow you up now because well you have threads they don't let you do yeah. it yeah that's weird. So it is weird. So it was like that. That's something in the fine print there. Um, and that I do have a sub stack. I'm trying to get back into podcasting. Um, I kind of had one show that was like, "Do you band camp, bro?" It was like kind of. I don't even. Is that even a thing we say anymore? I don't think it's a thing we say anymore. Do you remember back in like 2016? It was like, "Do you even, bro?" Yeah. And so yeah. Yeah, so yeah. I'm kind of holding on to that nostalgia a little too much, I guess. I used to have a, I still have a, sh a shirt that says, "Do you even science, bro?" See, right? Because <laughs> it's funny. So, and the yeah. thing is that, like, I my podcast was everything in the kitchen sink, and then I I went and I did a couple of weird things, and so I have a segment called "Do You ban Even Band Camp, Bro," where I just basically only have band camp um, bands. but they're like all over the globe, and they're all over like genres and how. You, I don't know. Like you can put metal and funk and soul. Like we're not talking like we're talking black death metal and funk and soul together in one show is pretty, pretty crazy. Right. Um, and for awesome. fans like you, you've probably never heard of. Right. And then, so I did one show in August and I went through a bit of depression because I'm like, am I doing this? Like I want to do it again, but I, I blacklisted myself so badly after I called out every, yeah. every music person for uh, being hypocritical with Marilyn Manson. Uh, oh, geez, yeah. I well, myself in the foot a lot. They need to be called out for that shit, but yeah, yeah they don't like it. Uh, yeah, but the thing is, is that now I'm like coming back and like they're like, oh, now the funny part is, is that that's the same people who called out Harvey Wise, um, Bill Cosby, Gian Jamashi, and these are musicians, uh, industry people. Um, real industry people and even hobbyists. I do not care if you, like you, anybody who I slayed you all because the thing is that my thing is that you can't be a bandwagon social activist. It's you can't just pick and choose. You're either an ally to women or you're not. So yeah. the thing is that that Me Too movement was so crucial for so many women, right? And then you know people were going yeah. after Bill Cosby, John, and whatever have you. Oh, well, we're gonna we're not gonna we're gonna stay silent about Marilyn Manson. Right. And I was like, what the yeah. fuck? And I'm like, why yeah. are you guys not calling them out? And so then I did some challenging tweets to him, like, why aren't you calling out this, this guy? And I did it on Twitter, I think. Um, <laughs> I didn't do it in a DM. And I'm like, cause, and then because I, I was angry because they were so yeah. public about, you know, being an ally to these women, but so quiet when it was somebody that they liked or toured with. And I was like, or, you know, or did, did a show or yeah. like the band. And I was so devastated. I was crushed. And so it's hard for me to come back into doing this again, because the thing is that I don't have a lot of male allies anymore because I've burned those bridges because yeah, the they couldn't take it. Yeah. <laughs> and, well, it's not that they couldn't take it. Now I'm problematic. Well, Nikki, you just, you're problematic now because like you seem to be offended. I'm like, yeah, you're right. I am offended. And they're like, well, you can't yeah. be like, but yeah, I can. Right. So, cause you're part of the yeah. problem. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And, and like the thing is that I'm if you're I'm not too keen on centrists, but I respect them because to me it's like if you're a real cent like a true centrist, you stay the fuck out of everything. You don't have right. you, don't, you don't have an opinion. Yeah. Period. You're and not taking. You're right. Yeah. So there are people who are in the industry 
who, who are true centrists. They don't get involved either way, you know, and I have more respect for those than the people who went to either side when they felt like it, but didn't continue it. Right. Like mm-hmm. you, you either are part of a movement or you're not the same thing with black life matters. Right. I mean, yeah. how many people are talking about the NAACP anymore? They're not right. Every 20, uh, 20 teens, I'm always making sure I'm promoting stuff uh, on social media and making sure that I'm uh, promoting black bands or black artists and stuff like that. Um, and then promoting all the, the charity organizations, people give up after a while. Right. Yeah. That's, it's like the, uh, I guess it's kind of like the meme where like the guy, the liberal who's removing the black lives matter from sign out of their yard. Like, well, I guess we're done with this now. Yeah. No, you're not done with this. You know, no. that sign still that was, needs to be there. Yeah. And that, that was just that. And that moment was just a crux of awareness is what it was. It was the, 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 the cam, like the, it was a straw that broke the camel's back. And it's like, yeah. this is like, this is enough of this stuff because we're done, you know? Yeah. It yeah, was yeah, kind right. of like, like our civil rights movement, but not really, but entirely like our civil rights movement that was happening in the 1950s and 60s. That's as close right. as we get. And we don't yeah. know that because we didn't grow up in that era, right? So yeah. we, we don't understand that this is like, now we get why they're fucking tired and, and, and angry about this. Because if you think about it, not much has changed in 70 years. And now it seems to be going backwards. Well, yeah. When we talk about Roe versus Wade, yeah, that's for sure. You, you can how you can tell me what to do with my body. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. that's great. Yeah, <laughs> isn't that great? You can tell me whether I can have a kid, like, and then you can put we're not here yet, but soon it'll happen. Whatever happens oh, in the yeah. states, it's going to happen here. Yeah. And it's it like I, it really sadly does. It's like I don't like we're but like for instance. We're still waiting for America to agree with us on whether we can get rid of daylight savings time. Okay, so if we can't, we can't. And it's because I'm in Saskatchewan, so we don't do that anyway. (laughs) But well, here in Ontario, really, you guys don't do it? You don't, guys don't do it? So the thing, so if you guys can't do it, you guys don't do it, why can't Ontario not do it? Like, get it together. Yeah, exactly. Like, nobody else in the world cares. You know what I mean? Why are we taking rules? Why are we taking the lead from one of the, one of the only, one of two countries in the whole entire world that uses the imperial system? What the fuck? Right? Yeah. Why? Obviously nonsense. (laughs) I mean, it's not even Star Wars related, but if it was, it'd be kind of cheeky, but no, that's not why they did it. Like, why? They just wanted to be different. Same thing with football. It's a terrible, terrible idea. Football? Soccer? Why do we call it soccer? Has nothing to... What what does soccer even mean? (laughs) Yeah, that's right. But football, American football, when do they use their feet for the ball? Just for the kickoff, right? What make yep. it make sense? It doesn't. Yeah, no, that's right. It doesn't. Anyways, um, so yeah, so that's all I have to plug. Julie Lalonde, cool. look for her stuff. Um, and then mine is at EKS. Um, I'm on Mixcloud. That's where you can get the shows right now. Um, okay. And I pay for a pro thing so that there's no advertisements. Um, and then what else? Um, if you follow me on Twitter, I may not follow you back. That's just who I am. I vet my followers something very intensely. That's right. And and then if you have a male fragile ego, I will if if I happen to follow you and you end up having a male fra- fragile ego, I'm just putting it <laughs> there, is that I will remove you from following me. So that's yeah. what I've done. Yeah. So I don't I don't believe in blocking. Some people do. I feel blocks are meant for safety reasons only. Because right. I feel like everybody yeah. should have a right to say whatever they want to say. Well, ish. Right. Um, You can say things as long as they're like, you can disagree with me. You can call me whatever name you want. I don't give a shit. But the thing is that I'm not going to block you unless you're trying to threaten my life or you're threatening to stalk me, Um, which oddly enough does happen on on the Internet. It's creepy. I've done a lot of muting people. That's what I do. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. Um, Well, I try not to do that because I'm always worried about um, if I'm muting them, that I'm going to miss some of their content. So. What I do is, yeah, right? So the other thing you can do is you can put them on a private list. Mute them, but then put them on a private list. Ah, uh, so I have, I have private lists. So then this way, I'm, if I have, like, I have one for, like, news or something like that. And I have a kind of other lists as well. Some of them are public. Some of them are private. 
Um, just because if I have somebody that's on a locked account, I don't necessarily, obviously, if they're on a locked account, you don't get to see who the fuck they are. So, but yeah. I might need to see their information. So I'm going to put them in a private list so that I can uh, access their, their tweets a little bit more because sometimes I just get a lot of ads, right? I'm not playing for, paying for no blue check. <laughs> no, that's right. All right. Well, I guess that'll do for today. And thank you yeah. very much for joining me. Thank you, Corey, for giving me the time to go and um, to uh, scold your listeners about making sure that women are safe <laughs> in their spaces. I appreciate sure. that. Um, and if you ever want to have me on and we can go and we can go tat 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 with, uh, with gender stuff, <gasps> maybe you can get another guest on. That'd be fun. Um, for sure. but I, 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 I would love to have those conversations with someone. I think we need to have more of those conversations. And thank you for being that cis hetero norm white male who actually <laughs> makes spaces for other people. That's important. Well, I appreciate, I appreciate that. I, 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 I'm not going to say you're welcome because I don't really want to take, I don't feel like I deserve that much credit for it. <laughs> I'm just, See, just I, doing what's right. I, I, I know you're doing what's right, but you're taking some lumps, man. You're taking some lumps. All right. Uh, yeah. All right. That'll do. All right. That's all, folks. Thanks for watching or listening. Uh, remember to share this show with your friends and on the social media site that you use the most. Thank you to everyone who supports this show on Patreon. I really appreciate it. And it helps me keep the internet and power on. Thanks to my top patrons. Some Random Geek, Damien Marie at Hope, Justin Clark, Christopher Taylor, Dan F. Smith, and Lisa Glass. And thank you to my new patrons. You can stay tuned for the list of patrons at the end to see your name listed. If you aren't a patron and want to contribute, you can do that at patreon.com slash skeptical leftist, or you can send a one-time donation to buymeacoffee.com slash skeptical lefty. These days, I also have a Substack and a ghost where you can subscribe for free or you can donate a per month. And lastly, you can get a paid subscription on Spotify that will give you the same access bonus content and extra long episodes. If you can't contribute financially, then a like on YouTube or a five-star rating and a review on Apple Podcasts or one of the podcast review sites like Podchaser would be great. If you want to find more from me, then make sure to check out the show notes for links to all my stuff or check out my website, skepticalleftist.com. That's where you can find all of my social media spaces and communities, as well as the other shows that I do. You can also email me at mindofaskepticalleftist at gmail.com. Thanks so much for listening or watching. Make sure to leave a comment on the video or on my website. Join your local org, print off some posters or pamphlets, and spread the propaganda. fucker in high school and it was taught properly a lot of shit would have changed <laughs> and the thing is that i shouldn't have to pay six hundred dollars a course right to gain this knowledge yeah. yeah that's where the that's where the crux is so it's like i know a lot about critical race theory because i took it when i went to university right i know a lot about you know disability because i took it in university i know a lot about the indigenous because i took it in university these things should already be teaching. We should be taught this in high school. Yeah, for sure. The thing is that if we're being, if I have to pay to learn it, I'm happy to pay for it to learn. But the thing is that that becomes an accessibility issue to knowledge based on your income. Right, for sure. Or loan, or or also the field that you go into. See what I'm saying? I don't like to think of myself as an anarchist, but I get where you're coming from. <laughs>